An African Investor Summit is taking place in New York City this week, bringing together CEOs and business leaders to talk about intercontinental trade and institutional investment. Now, among those attending is Elaine Ebobise, the Chief Executive Officer of Africa 50. That's a Pan-African Infrastructure Investment Platform funded by the Africa Development Bank and several African countries. Africa 54 business correspondent Jill Malandrino sat down for a conversation with Mr. Ebosise. Joining me is Ilan Ebobisi, CEO of Africa 50. And let's talk about what you think are the really big issues right now for the continent. Thank you very much. Thank I you. think, uh, frankly, one of the biggest issues that the continent has to face today is the, uh, the lack of infrastructure to support the economic growth in the continent. So the continent has a lot of resources, uh, but in order to achieve the full potential in terms of economic growth and uh, improving the life of the population of Africa, I think infrastructure has definitely be, uh, has to be something that uh, has to be developed a bit faster. Of course, there are macroeconomic challenges uh, that are in the process of being solved, but infrastructure investment is definitely for me the key issue. What about financial infrastructure investment as well? Because now that we're starting to see more trade between the countries, economies are growing based on that alone. So if you have the physical infrastructure, financial infrastructure, that really lends to growth as well. Absolutely. I think that's a very, very important point. I think uh, everybody understands that Africa countries, most of them pre uh, taken individually, they are too small. So you need to have uh, uh, trade, you need to have regional integration to create bigger markets so that you can actually have uh, a bit more attractiveness to private investors. And today we are seeing a number of uh, African banks that basically are operating across many uh, countries, and we need to see a bit more of that. Uh, I can cite, uh, for example, EcoBank, and some of the Moroccan, Moroccan banks, they're becoming Pan-African banks, and I think we need to see more of these kind of uh, entities uh, becoming covering the continent uh, as a whole. Outside of commodity dependency, not oil, not gold, what other sectors make it interesting for U.S. institutional investors to put their money to work in Africa? Well, I'm going to go back to the infrastructure space. Uh, frankly, I think uh, you can actually have today good invest, uh, investment opportunities in the continent that provide very good returns in the infrastructure space. And uh, we at Africa 50, which is the institution that I'm running, we've been set up to basically to try to promote that private investment in the infrastructure space. We have raised about 800, uh, $830 million of capital to invest in that uh, space. But we need partners. We need U.S. Uh, companies, U.S. pension funds, U.S. investors to come in and work with us to invest that money and to make profit, to make good returns. A big objection to investing in Africa is transparency. Yes. How do you address that? Absolutely. I think we have to be very clear that uh, when we invest in projects, it has to be very transparent. We need to make sure that all the stakeholders uh, understand that transparency is key. It's actually an opportunity. When a country or a project is fully transparent, I think investors are more comfortable to come in and invest. So our job, again, at Africa 50, which is an institution uh, which was created by African governments, is to work with governments and the stakeholders to, to, to convince them that transparency is really, really important in making sure that investors will come in and get comfortable. I come from the World Bank Group. I spend a lot of time on the World Bank Group, and we have a number of standards that I think are very useful uh, to apply in infrastructure development in other businesses so that we give comfort to the other participants to, to, to invest uh, comfortably. comfortably. On the local level, how are the people accepting this? Are they getting more education programs, health programs? to Because they really are the basis yes. of the growth. Absolutely. I think uh, one of the stories of uh, Africa uh, future is that uh, the middle class is growing, and we need to continue to grow the middle class uh, so as to reach a, a sustainable level of, level of growth. So education is extremely key. We need to make sure that we uh, educate uh, people in the continent and educate in the right sectors where they can find actually jobs. I think one of the biggest challenges of uh, uh, African leaders is to create opportunities for people to have good jobs and uh, that will start with having good education and also other social sectors like healthcare also is something that needs to be taken care of. In relevant sectors like agribusiness, technology, mobile banking and I think that also helps with the unemployment rate too which is 
you know, th that's a big issue, just like we see in the states coming out of college and university, putting people in jobs where it's relevant to 2016 and beyond. Definitely, I think that's the issue that we see uh, across the world already. Right. To make sure that uh, there is enough work, enough uh, job, good uh, jobs for, especially for youth for younger people uh, that are coming out of uh, university and not necessarily getting jobs. So I think uh, uh, for me, uh, a good, very important part of the uh, economic policies of government is to try to make sure that uh, even when we do this big project I mentioned infrastructure earlier, that there is also component to that project which address jobs. So, so because this is very important. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us here today. It's great to have you here in the States thank, with us. Thank you very much. From the NASDAQ market site in Times Square, I'm Jill Malandrino for The Voice of America. Be sure to stay tuned as we will have African and U.S. business leaders joining us throughout the day.